Officer Mark Reynolds had spent years patrolling the streets, his reputation as a strict, no-nonsense cop preceding him. Known for his rigid enforcement of the law, particularly in lower-income areas, Mark had developed a tough exterior that left little room for doubt or compassion. On a seemingly quiet afternoon, Mark was driving through a suburban neighborhood, his eyes scanning the surroundings with the vigilance that had become second nature to him. As he approached an intersection, a sleek black car with heavily tinted windows slowly rolled through a stop sign. The vehicle immediately caught Mark's attention. Without a second thought, he flipped on his lights and siren, signaling the driver to pull over. The car complied, pulling to the side of the road in a smooth, almost deliberate manner. Mark approached the vehicle with the same cautiousness he employed during any stop, his hand instinctively hovering near his holster. As he neared the driver's side window, he felt a shift in the air, a subtle change in the atmosphere that set his nerves on edge. The window rolled down, revealing the driver inside, and Mark's breath caught in his throat. Sitting behind the wheel was Judge Rebecca Carter, one of the state's most prominent and powerful judges. Known for her fierce stance on civil rights and her no-tolerance attitude toward discrimination, Rebecca's name commanded respect and fear in equal measure. Rebecca was in her early 50s, a tall, commanding black woman with an air of authority that seemed to fill the space around her. Her dark eyes locked onto Mark's, and for a moment, the world seemed to stand still. This was no ordinary traffic stop. This was a high-stakes encounter with a woman who had the power to shape the very laws Mark was sworn to uphold. Is there a problem, officer? Rebecca asked, her voice calm, but laced with a subtle warning. Mark struggled to find his voice, his mind racing to assess the situation. He knew this was not just about a minor traffic violation. This was about something much bigger, something that could have serious repercussions for his career. With a shaky hand, Mark took Rebecca's license and registration. As he glanced over the documents, he couldn't help but feel the weight of the moment pressing down on him. This wasn't just a routine stop. It was a confrontation between two worlds, each representing different sides of the same system. Rebecca watched him closely, her expression unreadable. Officer Reynolds, she said, her tone measured. I believe we need to discuss more than just a stop sign violation today. Mark felt a chill run down his spine as he realized this encounter was about to take a turn he hadn't anticipated. The power dynamics had shifted, and Mark found himself in a situation where the stakes were much higher than he had ever imagined. Mark Reynolds stood by the side of the road, clutching Judge Rebecca Carter's documents in his hand, feeling the weight of the moment. His usual confidence had evaporated, leaving him with a deep sense of unease. This was no ordinary traffic stop. This was a confrontation with a woman who wielded immense power and influence. The significance of the situation was not lost on him, and he knew that one wrong move could have serious consequences. Rebecca's gaze remained fixed on Mark, her expression calm but authoritative. Officer Reynolds, I think it's important that we talk about the underlying issues that brought us to this moment, she said, her voice steady but with an edge that made it clear she wasn't simply referring to the stop sign violation. Mark's heart pounded as he considered his response. He had been in difficult situations before, but nothing like this. His training had prepared him for confrontations, but it hadn't prepared him for the psychological and social complexities that were now at play. He could feel the tension in the air, the unspoken power struggle between them, and it unnerved him. I'm just doing my job, ma'am, Mark replied, though he could hear the uncertainty in his own voice. He knew that this was not the right thing to say, that it would not diffuse the situation, but he couldn't think of anything else. Rebecca leaned back in her seat, her eyes narrowing slightly. And part of your job, officer, is to ensure that you are not letting biases influence your decisions. Can you honestly say that this stop had nothing to do with my appearance or the type of car I'm driving? The question hit Mark like a punch to the gut. He had prided himself on being impartial, on upholding the law without prejudice. But Rebecca's words forced him to confront the uncomfortable possibility that she might be right. He had pulled her over because her car stood out, because it didn't fit the profile of the neighborhood, and because she didn't fit his expectations of who should be driving such a vehicle. For a moment, Mark considered brushing off her comments, sticking to his usual script and issuing a ticket. 
but something in Rebecca's calm yet firm demeanor made him hesitate. This wasn't just about him anymore. It was about the larger issues of racial profiling and systemic bias that Rebecca had spent her career fighting against. Taking a deep breath, Mark handed back her documents. You're right, Judge Carter. Maybe we do need to have a different conversation today. And I Rebecca nodded slightly as if she had expected this response. Good, because this isn't just about me, Officer Reynolds. It's about the broader implications of how we enforce the law and how we treat each other in this society. Mark felt the tension in his shoulders ease slightly, though he knew this was only the beginning of a much larger discussion, one that would challenge everything he thought he knew about his job, his beliefs, and his role in the community. As Mark stood by the side of the road, grappling with the weight of Judge Rebecca Carter's words, the silence between them was thick with unspoken tensions. This was no longer a simple traffic stop, but a confrontation that could have far-reaching consequences for both of them. Mark could feel the eyes of the world on him, even though it was just the two of them on this quiet suburban street. Rebecca remained calm and composed, her gaze never leaving Mark's face. She was not just challenging him personally, she was challenging the entire system he represented. Officer Reynolds, she began again, her voice steady and measured. Every decision we make in situations like this carries consequences. Consequences that can impact not just the individuals involved, but the broader community as well. Mark felt the truth of her words resonate deep within him. He had always believed in the importance of his work, in upholding the law, and keeping the community safe. But now, faced with Rebecca's quiet challenge, he was forced to confront the possibility that his actions might not always align with those ideals. Was he really protecting and serving, or was he perpetuating a cycle of bias and injustice? The thought made him uncomfortable, but he couldn't deny it. The very fact that he was questioning his actions was proof enough that something wasn't right. Mark knew he had a choice to make, a choice that would not only define this moment, but potentially alter the course of his career. Rebecca's voice broke through his thoughts. I'm not here to make things difficult for you, Officer Reynolds, but I do believe that we need to start holding each other accountable, especially in positions of power. If we don't, nothing will ever change. Mark nodded slowly, processing her words. He realized that issuing a ticket, as he had initially intended, would be the easy way out. It would allow him to follow protocol, to maintain his authority, and to avoid the uncomfortable conversation that was now unfolding but it would also mean ignoring the deeper issues at play, the very issues that Rebecca was urging him to confront. Taking a deep breath, Mark made his decision. He wasn't going to issue the ticket. Instead, he was going to listen, to truly listen, to what Rebecca had to say. He knew it might cost him something, whether it be his reputation, his peace of mind, or even his job. But he also knew that doing the right thing often came at a price. I'm willing to have that conversation, Judge Carter, Mark said, his voice firm despite the turmoil inside him. I'm willing to listen and to learn. Rebecca's expression softened slightly and she nodded in approval. That's a start, Officer Reynolds. A good start. The tension between them began to ease, though Mark knew that this was just the beginning. The real work was yet to come. The work of examining his own biases of challenging the system he had been a part of for so long, and of finding a way to contribute to real, meaningful change. As Rebecca started her car and prepared to drive away, Mark stood back, watching her go. He knew that this encounter would stay with him, that it would shape his actions and decisions in the days to come. And though the path ahead was uncertain, he felt a newfound determination to walk it, to do better, to be better. The drive back to the station was a blur for Officer Mark Reynolds. His mind replayed the encounter with Judge Rebecca Carter over and over, each moment weighed down with the gravity of what had just transpired. He knew that this was not just another routine traffic stop. This was a turning point, one that would reverberate through the station and beyond. As Mark pulled into the parking lot of the precinct, he noticed the usual buzz of activity. Officers were coming and going, Dispatchers were on the phones, and the day was proceeding as it always did. But as he walked through the front doors, he felt a shift in the atmosphere. Colleagues who usually greeted him with a nod or a casual hello seemed to avoid his gaze. Conversations hushed as he passed by, 
and Mark could sense the weight of their curiosity and judgment. He made his way to his desk, trying to ignore the growing knot in his stomach. The station had always been a place of routine and order for him, a place where he knew his role and his responsibilities. But today it felt different. The usual sense of camaraderie was replaced by an unsettling tension, as if everyone was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Before Mark could sit down, Sergeant Daniels appeared, his face stern and unreadable. Reynolds, my office. Now, he said, his tone leaving no room for argument. Mark followed him, his nerves tightening with each step. He knew this conversation was inevitable, but it didn't make it any easier. Inside the office, Daniels closed the door and motioned for Mark to sit. The sergeant leaned against his desk, arms crossed, his eyes fixed on Mark. I've heard about the stop, Daniels began, his voice low and controlled. Judge Carter is a high-profile figure, Reynolds. You've put us in a delicate situation. Mark swallowed hard, feeling the weight of his superior's words. I didn't issue a ticket, sir. I thought it was more important to listen to what she had to say. Daniel sighed, rubbing a hand over his face. And what exactly did she have to say? Mark hesitated, knowing that his next words could either justify his actions or put him in deeper trouble. She wanted to talk about the bigger issues, sir, about racial profiling, about the way we enforce the law. She, she made me think about things differently. Daniel studied him for a moment, his expression softening slightly. Look, Reynolds, I get it. We're all trying to do our jobs, but sometimes things get complicated. You've got to understand, though, that this is going to raise a lot of questions. The brass won't be happy about this, and neither will some of the guys here. Mark nodded, already feeling the weight of his decisions. I understand, sir, but I couldn't just brush her off. It didn't feel right. Daniels nodded, a slight smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. You've got guts, Reynolds, I'll give you that. But just know that this isn't over. There's going to be fallout, and you need to be ready for it. Mark left the office with a mix of relief and trepidation. He had stood by his decision, but he knew that the coming days would be challenging. The whispers and sideways glances from his colleagues were just the beginning. There would be questions, scrutiny, and perhaps even backlash from within the department. But despite the uncertainty, Mark felt a small sense of pride. He had done what he believed was right, and for the first time in a long time, that was enough. Right. The next few days at the station were some of the most challenging Mark Reynolds had ever faced. The story of his encounter with Judge Rebecca Carter spread like wildfire, not just within the precinct, but throughout the city. Whispers followed him wherever he went, and he could feel the eyes of his colleagues on him, judging him for what they saw as a breach of loyalty to the force. Mark had always prided himself on being a part of the Brotherhood, on upholding the unwritten code that bound officers together. But now, that bond felt strained, as if a wall had been erected between him and the rest of the department. Some of the younger officers looked at him with a mix of curiosity and respect, as if they were silently applauding his courage. But the older, more seasoned cops, those who had spent decades in the force, regarded him with suspicion and even disdain. It wasn't long before the higher-ups got involved, Mark was called into a meeting with Lieutenant Roberts, a no-nonsense officer who had been with the department for over 30 years. Roberts was known for his strict adherence to the rules and his belief in the chain of command. As Mark sat in the lieutenant's office, he could feel the tension in the air. Reynolds, Roberts began, his voice calm but firm. I've been hearing a lot about what happened with Judge Carter. This isn't something we can just sweep under the rug. The department is under scrutiny and so are you. Mark nodded, his hands clenched in his lap. He knew this conversation was coming, but it didn't make it any easier. I understand, sir, but I couldn't just ignore what she was saying. It didn't feel right. Roberts leaned back in his chair, his eyes narrowing as he studied Mark. I get that you were trying to do the right thing, Reynolds, but you need to understand the position you've put us in. The media is already sniffing around and the public is paying attention. This could turn into something much bigger than a traffic stop. Mark felt a knot tighten in his stomach. He had known from the moment he decided not to issue the ticket that there would be consequences, but he hadn't fully grasped the magnitude of what he had set in motion. I didn't mean to cause any trouble, sir. I just thought, I thought it was important to listen. 
Robert sighed, a heavy sound that seemed to carry the weight of years of experience. Look, Reynolds, you're a good cop. You've always done your job well. But in this line of work, you've got to be careful. You've got to think about the bigger picture. Mark nodded, but inside he was conflicted. He knew Roberts was right. There was a bigger picture to consider, one that involved the reputation of the department, the trust of the community, and the delicate balance between authority and accountability. But he also knew that if he had to do it all over again, he would make the same decision. As Mark left the lieutenant's office, he couldn't shake the feeling that things were about to get even more complicated. The station had always been a place of order, of rules and regulations that made sense. But now everything felt uncertain, as if the ground beneath him was shifting. He knew he had done the right thing, but he also knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges. That evening, as Mark sat alone in his small apartment, he found himself reflecting on the past few days. He had always believed in the law, in the importance of following the rules. But his encounter with Judge Carter had opened his eyes to the fact that sometimes those rules needed to be questioned. Sometimes doing the right thing meant stepping outside the lines. And as he stared out the window at the darkening sky, Mark made a silent promise to himself. No matter what happened next, he would continue to stand up for what he believed was right. He would continue to listen, to learn, and to challenge the system when necessary. Because he knew that if change was going to happen, it had to start somewhere. Yeah. The morning after Mark Reynolds met with Lieutenant Roberts, he arrived at the station to find the atmosphere even more tense than before. As he walked through the halls, he noticed groups of officers huddled together, their conversations hushed but urgent. Mark could feel their eyes on him as he passed by, and it was clear that something had shifted since the previous day. When he reached his desk, Mark's phone buzzed with a flurry of notifications. He picked it up, only to find dozens of messages from friends, family, and even some strangers. The messages ranged from words of support to warnings about the brewing storm. Confused, Mark opened one of the links that had been sent to him. The link led to a news article, the headline glaring back at him. Judge Rebecca Carter calls out racial profiling after traffic stop. Police department under fire. The article detailed their encounter, quoting Rebecca extensively as she spoke about the broader issues of racial bias in law enforcement. She hadn't mentioned Mark by name, but the implications were clear. The story had already gained traction, with social media buzzing about the incident and calls for change growing louder by the minute. Mark felt his chest tighten as he scrolled through the article. He knew that by choosing to engage in that conversation with Rebecca, he had opened a door that couldn't be closed, but he hadn't anticipated the speed at which the situation would escalate, nor the public outcry that would follow. His thoughts were interrupted by the sound of a door slamming nearby. Sergeant Daniels stormed into the room, his face flushed with anger. Reynolds, in my office! Now! He barked, his voice leaving no room for argument. Mark followed Daniels into the office, his heart pounding. The sergeant didn't wait for him to sit before he launched into a tirade. Do you have any idea what you've done, Reynolds? The media is all over this. The chief is getting calls from the mayor's office, and we're being painted as the bad guys here. Mark opened his mouth to respond, but Daniels cut him off. You've put us in a real tough spot, Reynolds. Judge Carter is a public figure, and she's using this incident to push her agenda. And now we're caught in the middle of it. I was just trying to do the right thing, Mark said, his voice strained. I didn't want to make things worse, but I couldn't ignore what she was saying. Daniel shook his head, his expression a mix of frustration and disappointment. I get that you were trying to do the right thing, but you've got to understand, this isn't just about you anymore. The whole department is under scrutiny now, and there's no telling how this is going to play out. Mark felt the weight of Daniel's words, but he also felt a growing sense of resolve. He knew that he had made the right choice, even if it had thrown the department into chaos. I understand, sir, Mark said quietly. But if we don't address these issues, if we don't start having these conversations, nothing is ever going to change. Daniel studied him for a long moment his expression softening slightly. You've got guts, Reynolds, but guts aren't going to fix this mess. The chief wants to see you after your shift. Be ready. As Mark left the sergeant's office, he couldn't shake the feeling that his life had just taken a sharp turn. The backlash was only beginning, and he knew that the days ahead would be some of the toughest he'd ever faced. But as he sat back at his desk, 
Mark felt a small flicker of hope. He had stood up for what he believed in, and now there was no turning back. By the time Mark's shift ended, the weight of the day had settled heavily on his shoulders. He had spent the afternoon avoiding eye contact with his colleagues, the tension in the station palpable. The media coverage of his encounter with Judge Rebecca Carter had transformed what could have been a routine traffic stop into a full-blown scandal, and now he was about to face the consequences. As Mark made his way to the chief's office, he felt a mix of anxiety and determination. He knew that this meeting could determine the future of his career, but he also knew that he couldn't back down now. If there was ever a time to stand by his convictions, it was now. The door to Chief Henderson's office was slightly ajar, and Mark could see the chief sitting behind his desk, his expression stern as he reviewed a stack of papers. Mark knocked lightly on the door before stepping inside. Reynolds, take a seat, Chief Henderson said without looking up from his papers. Mark complied, his hands clenched tightly in his lap. The silence that followed was deafening, and Mark could feel his heart pounding in his chest. Finally, Chief Henderson looked up, his gaze sharp and unyielding. I've been reading up on this incident with Judge Carter, he began, his voice calm, but with an edge that made Mark uneasy. This situation has put us in a very difficult position. The media is having a field day, and the department's reputation is on the line. Mark swallowed hard, trying to steady his nerves. I understand, sir, but I felt it was important to listen to what Judge Carter had to say. She raised some valid points about how we enforce the law. The chief leaned back in his chair, his eyes narrowing as he considered Mark's words. You've always been a good cop, Reynolds. You've done your job well, and you've earned the respect of your peers. But this, this is different. You've opened up a can of worms that we're now all going to have to deal with. Mark nodded, feeling the weight of the chief's disappointment. I didn't mean to cause trouble, sir, but I couldn't ignore what was happening. I couldn't just go through the motions and pretend like everything was fine. Chief Henderson sighed, a deep, heavy sound that seemed to carry the burden of years of leadership. This isn't just about you, Reynolds. The department is under a microscope now, and every move we make is going to be scrutinized. We've got community leaders calling for investigations, and the mayor is demanding answers. This could get ugly. Mark's heart sank as he realized the full extent of the situation. He had expected backlash, but he hadn't anticipated that it would spiral into something this big. What happens now, sir? Mark asked, bracing himself for the worst. The chief was silent for a moment, his gaze never leaving Mark's face. For now, you're going to be placed on administrative leave while we sort this out. It's not a punishment, but we need to take the heat off while we figure out our next steps. Mark felt a lump form in his throat, but he nodded in understanding. I see, sir. Look, Reynolds, Chief Henderson continued, his tone softening slightly. I don't want you to think this is the end of your career. You're a good cop, and I believe you had the right intentions. But right now, we're all in damage control mode. Take the time off, and we'll reevaluate once things have settled down. Mark stood up, his mind reeling from the conversation. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate it. As he left the office, Mark felt a mix of relief and dread. He had been spared the worst for now, but the uncertainty of what lay ahead weighed heavily on him. As he walked out of the station, he knew that this was only the beginning of a long and difficult journey. The public outcry, the scrutiny from the media, and the tension within the department were all challenges he would have to face in the days to come. But as Mark stepped into the cool evening air, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. He had made his choice, and now he had to live with it. No matter what happened next, he knew that he had done what he believed was right. As days turned into weeks, Mark Reynolds found himself adrift. Administrative leave was not the reprieve he had hoped for. It felt more like exile. The routine that had once defined his life was gone, replaced by long stretches of empty time and a gnawing sense of uncertainty. He spent his days reflecting on the events that had led to this moment, replaying the encounter with Judge Rebecca Carter over and over in his mind. The media storm had only intensified since the initial coverage. Rebecca's social media posts detailing the traffic stop had gone viral, sparking a nationwide conversation about racial profiling and police reform. The hashtag WashuJusticeWithRebecca was trending across all platforms, and activists were using the incident as a rallying cry for change.
Mark watched it all unfold from the sidelines, feeling both disconnected and deeply involved. He had become a central figure in a narrative that was much larger than himself, and yet he felt powerless to influence it. The public saw him as either a symbol of everything wrong with law enforcement or as a rare example of a cop who was willing to confront his own biases. There was no middle ground, and the polarized opinions only added to his sense of isolation. One afternoon, as Mark sat on his couch scrolling through the endless stream of news articles and social media posts, his phone buzzed with a call from an unknown number. Hesitant, he answered, unsure of what to expect. Officer Reynolds? The voice on the other end was calm, measured, and familiar. It was Judge Rebecca Carter. Mark's heart skipped a beat. Judge Carter, he replied, struggling to keep his voice steady. What can I do for you? I'm calling because I think it's time we talked, Rebecca said. There was no anger or accusation in her tone, only a quiet determination. We never really finished our conversation that day, and I believe there's more to discuss. Mark was taken aback. He had assumed that after their encounter, Rebecca would have wanted nothing more to do with him. I'm... I'm willing to listen, he managed to say, the words coming out more awkwardly than he intended. Good, Rebecca replied. Meet me tomorrow at the coffee shop on Main Street at 10 a.m. I think it's time we both start thinking about what comes next. The call ended as abruptly as it had begun, leaving Mark staring at his phone in disbelief. He had no idea what Rebecca wanted to discuss or what she hoped to achieve, but he knew one thing. He couldn't pass up the opportunity. This could be his chance to finally understand the broader implications of their encounter and to start making amends. The next morning, Mark arrived at the coffee shop early, his nerves jangling as he waited. The small, cozy cafe was a stark contrast to the sterile environment of the police station, and the soft chatter of customers and the smell of freshly brewed coffee did little to calm his anxiety. When Rebecca arrived, she greeted him with a polite smile and took a seat across from him. For a moment, neither of them spoke, the silence between them heavy with unspoken words. Finally, Rebecca broke the silence. Officer Reynolds, Mark, I wanted to speak with you because I believe we both have a responsibility to see this through. Our encounter wasn't just a one-time event. It was a symptom of something much larger, something that needs to be addressed. Mark nodded, listening intently. I agree, Judge Carter, but I'm not sure where to start. Rebecca smiled slightly, her expression softening. That's why I'm here. I've been thinking about what happened, and I believe that we can use this as an opportunity to create real change, but it's going to require both of us to step out of our comfort zones. Mark felt a mix of relief and trepidation. He had been searching for a way to make things right, and now it seemed like Rebecca was offering him a path forward. I want to help, he said earnestly. I just don't know how. Rebecca leaned forward, her gaze intense. We start by having an open, honest conversation not just between the two of us, but with the community, with the department, with everyone who's been affected by this. We need to bring these issues to light, and we need to do it together. Mark took a deep breath, feeling the weight of her words. This was the turning point he had been waiting for, the chance to do more than just reflect on his mistakes. It was a chance to take action, to be part of something bigger than himself. I'm with you, Mark said, his voice steady with resolve. Let's do this. Over the next few days, Mark and Rebecca worked together to organize a public forum, a place where they could have the kind of honest, open conversation Rebecca had envisioned. The event was set to take place in the city's largest community center, a neutral ground where members of the public, law enforcement, and local leaders could come together to discuss the issues that had surfaced since their encounter. Word of the forum spread quickly, drawing attention from across the city. The anticipation was palpable, with many eager to see how the conversation would unfold. For some, it was a chance to confront the very system that had wronged them. For others, it was an opportunity to start mending the rift between the police and the community. On the day of the event, Mark arrived early, his nerves on edge as he helped set up the venue. The community center's large auditorium was filling up fast, with people of all ages and backgrounds taking their seats. The atmosphere was charged a mix of curiosity, tension, and hope hanging in the air. As the start time approached, Mark stood by the stage, taking in the sight of the growing crowd. 
He could see familiar faces, neighbors, colleagues, people he had encountered in his years on the force. But there were also many he didn't recognize. People from parts of the city he rarely visited, now all united by a common purpose. He felt a pang of anxiety at the thought of standing before them, vulnerable and exposed. Rebecca arrived shortly after, her presence immediately commanding attention. She moved through the crowd with calm assurance, greeting people with warm handshakes and nods. When she reached Mark, she gave him a reassuring smile. Are you ready? She asked, her tone gentle but firm. Mark took a deep breath, nodding. As ready as I'll ever be. Together they stepped onto the stage, the noise in the auditorium quieting as the audience turned their attention to the front. Mark felt his heart race as he approached the microphone, but Rebecca's calm presence beside him helped steady his nerves. Thank you all for being here today, Rebecca began, her voice clear and strong. We've come together because something happened that needs to be discussed, something that goes beyond a single traffic stop. It's about how we, as a community, interact with the systems of power in our society and how those systems can either uphold justice or perpetuate injustice. The audience listened intently, their expressions a mix of anticipation and skepticism. Mark felt the weight of their gaze, knowing that many were there to hear him speak just as much as they were to hear Rebecca. Rebecca turned to Mark, giving him a small nod. Officer Reynolds and I had an encounter that brought these issues to the forefront, and today we're here to talk about it openly, honestly, and with the goal of finding a way forward. Mark stepped up to the microphone, his mouth dry as he faced the crowd. He could see the expectation in their eyes, the desire for answers. I'm not going to pretend that I have all the answers, he began, his voice steady despite the fear that gripped him. But I'm here because I want to be part of the solution. I've spent a lot of time reflecting on what happened, and I realize that it's not just about one moment. It's about a pattern, a pattern that needs to be addressed. A murmur ran through the crowd and Mark felt a surge of adrenaline. He was no longer just speaking for himself. He was speaking for everyone who had been affected by the systemic issues Rebecca had highlighted. The forum quickly turned into a powerful exchange of experiences and ideas. Community members shared their stories, some heart-wrenching, others hopeful, about their interactions with law enforcement. Mark listened to each one, feeling the weight of their words as they described the fear, frustration, and pain they had endured. Rebecca guided the conversation with skill, ensuring that every voice was heard. She asked tough questions, challenging Mark and the other officers present to confront their own biases and to consider how they could do better. Mark found himself speaking more freely than he had ever done before, admitting to his own shortcomings and expressing his commitment to change. As the evening wore on, the tension in the room began to shift. What had started as a potentially volatile confrontation turned into a constructive dialogue, with both sides beginning to understand each other in a way that had never seemed possible before. By the time the forum ended, Mark felt an overwhelming sense of relief and hope. The conversation had been difficult, and there were still many challenges ahead, but they had taken the first step toward healing the rift that had divided them for so long. As the crowd began to disperse, Rebecca turned to Mark, her expression one of quiet pride. We did it, she said simply. Mark nodded, feeling a sense of accomplishment he hadn't experienced in years. Yeah, we did. But even as they left the stage, Mark knew that this was just the beginning. The journey toward true justice and equality would be long and arduous. But for the first time, he felt like he was on the right path. The days following the public forum were a whirlwind of emotions and reactions. The event had been more impactful than anyone had anticipated, and the ripples were felt across the entire city. For Mark Reynolds, the experience was both liberating and overwhelming. He had stepped into uncharted territory, and while the forum had been a success, it was clear that the challenges ahead were far from over. The media coverage of the forum was intense. News outlets from across the country picked up the story, framing it as a groundbreaking moment in the ongoing conversation about race, policing, and justice. Mark found himself at the center of a storm he had never imagined, with reporters and journalists seeking interviews and commentary. The public was divided. Some hailed him as a hero for confronting his own biases and taking a stand, while others viewed him as a traitor to his profession. At the station, 
the atmosphere remained tense. While a few officers quietly expressed their support for what Mark had done, the majority kept their distance. Whispers followed him down the hallways, and he could feel the weight of their judgment. Some of his colleagues saw him as a disruptor, someone who had betrayed the Brotherhood by airing the department's dirty laundry in public. The thin blue line had been crossed, and there was no going back. One afternoon, as Mark was catching up on paperwork at his desk, he received an unexpected visit from Officer Lisa Hernandez, one of the younger officers in the precinct. Lisa had always been respectful and hardworking, but she was also known for her progressive views, often advocating for changes within the department. Mark, Lisa began, her tone serious but friendly, I wanted to talk to you about something. Mark looked up from his desk, noting the determination in her eyes. Sure, Lisa. What's on your mind? She hesitated for a moment, as if gathering her thoughts. I just wanted to say that what you did at the forum, it was brave. I know not everyone sees it that way, but it's the kind of change we need. The department can't keep doing things the same way and expect different results. Mark felt a wave of gratitude wash over him. He hadn't expected support from within the station, especially not from someone like Lisa, who was still early in her career. Thanks, Lisa. That means a lot coming from you. I just hope it wasn't all for nothing. Lisa shook her head firmly. It wasn't. People are talking, Mark. Not just out there, but in here, too. Some of the younger guys, they're starting to see things differently. They're asking questions, and that's how change begins. Mark nodded, feeling a flicker of hope. I'm glad to hear that. It's a tough road, but I'm not going to back down. Lisa gave him a reassuring smile. You're not alone, Mark. There are more of us who want to see things change. We just have to keep pushing, even when it feels like we're going uphill. Their conversation was interrupted by the sudden arrival of Sergeant Daniels. He didn't seem surprised to see them talking, but his expression was unreadable. Reynolds, Chief Henderson wants to see you in his office, Daniels said, his tone neutral. Mark's heart skipped a beat. It had been a few days since the forum, and he had expected this meeting but that didn't make it any easier. Thanks, Sergeant. I'll be right there. As Lisa gave him a nod of encouragement, Mark stood up and made his way to the chief's office. The walk felt longer than usual, and the sense of dread that had been lingering in the back of his mind now moved to the forefront. He knew this conversation could go in many directions, and the uncertainty was almost unbearable. When he entered Chief Henderson's office, the atmosphere was heavy with tension. The chief was sitting behind his desk, his hands clasped in front of him, his expression serious but not hostile. Reynolds, Chief Henderson began, his voice calm. I've been doing a lot of thinking since the forum. What you and Judge Carter did, it stirred things up, that's for sure. But it's also got people talking, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mark felt a glimmer of hope, but he remained cautious. I just want to do what's right, Chief. I know this isn't easy for anyone, but we can't keep ignoring the problems. The chief nodded, his gaze thoughtful. You're right, we can't. The department needs to adapt, to evolve. But change isn't easy, especially in an institution like ours. There's going to be resistance. There already is. But I'm starting to think that what you've done might be the push we need. Mark was taken aback by the chief's words. He had expected more resistance more pushback, but here was the chief acknowledging the need for change. It was more than he had hoped for. We're going to be implementing some new training programs, Chief Henderson continued, and I want you to be involved. We need officers who are willing to lead by example, who are willing to have the tough conversations. Are you up for it? Mark felt a surge of determination. Absolutely, Chief. Whatever it takes. The chief gave him a small smile, the tension in the room easing slightly. Good. We'll be working closely with community leaders, including Judge Carter, to make sure we're heading in the right direction. This isn't going to be easy, but I think we're on the right path. As Mark left the chief's office, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. The road ahead would be difficult, but for the first time, he felt like real progress was being made. The aftershocks of his decision were still being felt, but they were creating cracks in the old system cracks through which the light of change could shine through. In the days that followed his meeting with Chief Henderson, Mark Reynolds found himself thrust into a new role within the department, 
one that was both daunting and inspiring. He was now part of a team tasked with developing and implementing new training programs aimed at addressing the very issues that had surfaced during his encounter with Judge Rebecca Carter. The goal was clear, to foster a culture of accountability, empathy, and understanding within the police force, and to bridge the widening gap between law enforcement and the community it served. Mark's first task was to work closely with community leaders, including Rebecca, to design the training modules. These sessions would cover a range of topics, from de-escalation techniques and bias awareness to the importance of building trust with the public. For Mark, the work was deeply personal. He was no longer just a cop following orders, but a man on a mission to make things right. The collaboration with Rebecca was intense but rewarding. They spent long hours discussing the nuances of the training, often delving into difficult conversations about race, power, and the law. Mark found himself learning more in those sessions than he had in his entire career. Rebecca's insights were invaluable, and her willingness to engage in these discussions with someone who had once represented the very system she fought against was a testament to her commitment to change. One evening after a particularly challenging session, Rebecca invited Mark to join her for a walk through the neighborhood where they had first crossed paths. It was a modest area with small houses and quiet streets, but it held a significance that neither of them could ignore. As they walked, the conversation shifted from work to more personal matters. Mark, Rebecca began, her tone reflective, I never expected that our paths would cross like this, but now that they have, I'm grateful. You've shown a willingness to change, to grow, and that's not something I see every day. Mark looked at her, feeling a mix of gratitude and humility. I'm just trying to do what's right. I've made a lot of mistakes, and I know I have a long way to go, but I'm committed to seeing this through. Rebecca smiled, a genuine expression that reached her eyes. That's all anyone can ask for. Change is a process, and it's not easy, but you're on the right path, and you're not alone. As they continued their walk, Mark couldn't help but notice how the neighborhood had changed since the day of their encounter. There was a sense of renewal in the air, a feeling that something positive was taking root. People waved as they passed by, and Mark felt a connection to the community that he hadn't experienced before. It was as if the barriers that had once separated him from the people he was sworn to protect were slowly coming down. The conversation with Rebecca drifted into lighter topics, family, hobbies, and their hopes for the future. Mark learned that Rebecca had a deep love for music and had once dreamed of becoming a pianist before the law had claimed her passion. In turn, Mark shared stories of his childhood, of growing up with dreams of being a hero, only to realize that heroism wasn't about glory, but about doing the right thing, even when it was hard. By the time they returned to Rebecca's car, the sun had dipped below the horizon, casting the neighborhood in a warm, golden glow. Mark felt a sense of peace that had been elusive for so long, and he knew that this was just the beginning of a new chapter in his life. Thank you, Rebecca, Mark said as they reached her car. For everything. Rebecca nodded, her expression thoughtful. Thank you, Mark. We still have a lot of work to do, but I believe we're on the right track. As she drove away, Mark stood there for a moment, watching the taillights disappear into the distance. He felt a deep sense of resolve. He was no longer just reacting to the events around him, but actively shaping the future. The training programs, the conversations, the bridges they were building, it all felt like the beginning of something much larger than himself. The following weeks were a whirlwind of activity. The training sessions began to take shape, with officers from all over the city attending workshops and seminars. The response was mixed. Some officers embraced the new approach, eager to learn and grow, while others resisted, clinging to the old ways. But Mark knew that change was never easy, and that the resistance they faced was just another hurdle to overcome. During one of the sessions, Mark noticed a familiar face in the crowd, Officer Lisa Hernandez, the young officer who had supported him from the beginning. Lisa was engaged, asking thoughtful questions and offering insights that showed a depth of understanding beyond her years. Mark felt a surge of pride, knowing that the seeds they were planting were already beginning to bear fruit. After the session, Lisa approached Mark with a smile. These trainings are making a difference, Mark. I can feel it. People are starting to see things in a new light. 
Mark nodded, feeling a sense of accomplishment. It's a start, Lisa, and we've got a long way to go, but I'm hopeful. As they talked, Mark couldn't help but reflect on how far they had come. The encounter with Rebecca had set off a chain reaction, one that was now transforming the very fabric of the police department and the community it served. And while the road ahead was still uncertain, Mark knew that they were heading in the right direction. That evening, as Mark returned home, he sat down at his kitchen table and opened his notebook. He had started keeping a journal shortly after the traffic stop, a way to process his thoughts and document the journey he was on. As he flipped through the pages, filled with notes and reflections, he realized how much he had changed. The man who had pulled over Judge Rebecca Carter was not the same man who now sat at this table. And as he wrote, Mark made a promise to himself to continue building bridges, to keep listening and learning, and to never forget the lessons he had learned along the way. Despite the progress Mark Reynolds had made in bridging the gap between law enforcement and the community, not everyone was on board with the changes. As the training programs continued, so did the pushback from some of his colleagues. For many, the idea of addressing systemic bias and racial profiling felt like a direct attack on their integrity, and they were not shy about voicing their displeasure. One afternoon, as Mark was wrapping up a particularly challenging training session, he was approached by Officer Greg Simmons, a veteran cop known for his traditional views and resistance to change. Greg was in his late 40s with a burly build and a demeanor that commanded attention. He had been with the force for over two decades and had seen his fair share of crime and violence. To him, the new training programs were a distraction from the real work of policing. Reynolds, Greg called out, his tone gruff as he approached. Got a minute? Mark turned to face him, sensing the tension even before Greg spoke. Sure, Greg. What's on your mind? Greg crossed his arms over his chest, his expression hard. I've been hearing a lot of talk about these new programs you and the brass are pushing. And I've got to tell you, not everyone's thrilled about it. Some of us think this whole thing is a waste of time. Mark felt a surge of frustration but kept his tone calm. I understand that change can be difficult, Greg, but these programs are about making sure we're doing our jobs the right way, protecting the community while also building trust. Greg scoffed, his eyes narrowing. Trust? You think that's going to keep us safe out there? You think a bunch of lectures on bias and empathy are going to stop a bullet? Mark held his ground, refusing to back down. This isn't about stopping bullets, Greg. It's about preventing the situations that lead to those bullets being fired in the first place. It's about making sure we're not just enforcing the law, but doing it in a way that's fair and just. Greg's jaw tightened, and for a moment Mark thought the older officer might lash out. But instead, Greg leaned in closer, his voice low and menacing. You're playing with fire, Reynolds. You're alienating your brothers in blue, and that's a dangerous game. You think those people out there respect you? You think they'll have your back when things go south? Think again. Mark's heart pounded, but he refused to be intimidated. He had come too far to back down now. This isn't about sides, Greg. It's about doing what's right. And if that means challenging the way we've always done things, then so be it. Greg's eyes flashed with anger, but he didn't respond. Instead, he turned on his heel and walked away, leaving Mark standing there, his fists clenched at his sides. The confrontation had left him shaken, but it had also strengthened his resolve. He knew there would be resistance, but he was prepared to face it. Later that evening, as Mark sat in his car, replaying the encounter in his mind, his phone buzzed with a message. It was from Officer Lisa Hernandez. Lisa, heard about what happened with Simmons. Just wanted to say, you're not alone in this. There are more of us who support you than you think. Mark stared at the message for a moment feeling a mix of relief and gratitude. He had expected backlash, but knowing that there were others who stood with him made it easier to bear. Mark, thanks, Lisa. That means a lot. We've got to stick together. The reply was almost immediate. Lisa, always, don't let them get to you. We're making progress, and they know it. Mark smiled as he put his phone down, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. The road ahead was still fraught with challenges, but he knew he wasn't walking it alone. The tensions within the department were a sign that the changes they were making were real, that they were shaking the very foundations of the old ways. As he drove home that night, 
Mark felt a quiet determination settle over him. He knew that the work he was doing was important, and he was ready to face whatever came next, no matter how difficult. The tension within the department continued to simmer in the weeks following Mark's confrontation with Officer Greg Simmons. Despite the resistance, Mark remained steadfast in his commitment to the changes he believed were necessary. However, the pushback from his colleagues weighed heavily on him, and there were moments when he wondered if he was fighting a losing battle. One morning, as Mark was reviewing notes for an upcoming training session, he received an unexpected visit from Captain Diane Evans, a senior officer who commanded significant respect within the department. Captain Evans was known for her no-nonsense approach to policing and her ability to navigate the complexities of department politics. She was also someone who rarely got involved in matters outside of her immediate responsibilities, so her presence in Mark's office was surprising. Captain Evans, Mark greeted her, standing up from his desk. What can I do for you? Captain Evans closed the door behind her and took a seat, gesturing for Mark to do the same. Her expression was serious, but there was a hint of something else, something Mark couldn't quite place. Reynolds, I wanted to talk to you about the work you've been doing with the training programs, she began, her tone measured. Mark braced himself for more criticism, but he nodded. Of course, Captain. I'm happy to discuss anything you'd like. Evans leaned forward slightly, her gaze intense. I've been watching what's been happening, Reynolds, and I've heard the grumblings from some of the guys. But I've also been hearing something else, something I didn't expect. Mark's curiosity peaked. What's that, Captain? She paused for a moment, as if weighing her words carefully. I've been hearing that there are officers, good officers, who are starting to see the value in what you're doing. They may not be vocal about it, but they're paying attention. And more importantly, they're thinking. They're questioning things they never questioned before. Mark felt a surge of hope but kept his expression neutral. That's encouraging to hear, Captain. I've always believed that change starts with those small shifts in perspective. Evans nodded, her expression softening slightly. It does. And I think you're on to something, Reynolds. But you need to know that this isn't going to get easier. The more progress you make, the harder the pushback will be. Simmons and the others, they won't back down without a fight. Mark nodded, appreciating her candor. I'm prepared for that, Captain. I've come too far to back down now. Captain Evans regarded him for a long moment, as if assessing his resolve. Then to Mark's surprise, she smiled. A small, almost imperceptible smile, but a smile nonetheless. Good. Because I think you're going to need all the support you can get. And that's why I'm here. Mark blinked, taken aback. Captain? Evans leaned back in her chair, her expression turning serious again. I'm not one for grand gestures, Reynolds, but I believe in what you're trying to do. The department needs to change, and it's going to take people like you to make that happen. So I'm offering my support, quietly, of course, but if you need someone in your corner, you can count on me. Mark was speechless for a moment, the weight of her words sinking in. Captain Evans was a formidable figure in the department, and her support was no small thing. Thank you, Captain. That means more to me than you know. Evans stood, smoothing out her uniform as she prepared to leave. Don't thank me yet, Reynolds. The hard part is still ahead. But if you stay the course, I think you'll find that you're not as alone as you think. As she walked to the door, she paused and turned back to him. And Reynolds, keep an eye on Simmons. He's not the type to let things go easily. Mark nodded, the gravity of her warning clear. I will, Captain. When she was gone, Mark sat back in his chair, absorbing the conversation. The unexpected support from Captain Evans was a welcome boost, but it also underscored the challenges that still lay ahead. Simmons and the others who opposed the changes wouldn't back down without a fight, and Mark knew he had to be prepared for whatever came next. But with allies like Lisa Hernandez and now Captain Evans, Mark felt more confident in his ability to navigate the storm. He wasn't fighting this battle alone, and that knowledge gave him the strength to keep moving forward. That evening, Mark reflected on how much had changed since his encounter with Judge Rebecca Carter. What had started as a single traffic stop had evolved into a movement, one that was challenging the very foundations of the police department. And while the journey was far from over, Mark felt more determined than ever to see it through. As he prepared for bed, Mark received another message from Lisa. Lisa, heard about Evans. 
You're making waves, Mark. Keep it up. Mark smiled, feeling a sense of camaraderie that had been missing for so long. Mark, thanks, Lisa. We're all in this together. And as he drifted off to sleep, Mark knew that no matter how difficult the road ahead might be, he had the strength and the support to face it head on. The support from Captain Diane Evans was a turning point for Mark Reynolds, bolstering his resolve as he continued to push forward with the department's new training programs. However, as the changes began to take root, so did the resistance. Tensions within the department grew, and the divide between those who embraced the new approach and those who clung to the old ways became more pronounced. Mark knew that the real test was yet to come. He had made significant progress, but he was acutely aware that one misstep could undo everything he had worked for. The department was at a crossroads and the choices made in the coming weeks would determine its future. One evening, as Mark was finishing up a late shift, he received a call from Lieutenant Roberts. His voice was tense and Mark could tell something was wrong. Reynolds, we've got a situation. Simmons is at the precinct and he's causing a scene. You need to get down here, now. Mark's heart sank as he grabbed his coat and rushed to the station. As he arrived, he could hear the commotion from outside. When he entered the building, he saw Greg Simmons in the middle of the lobby, his face red with anger as he argued with another officer. A small crowd had gathered, watching the confrontation with a mix of curiosity and apprehension. Simmons, Mark called out, his voice cutting through the noise. The crowd parted as Mark approached, and Simmons turned to face him, his expression a twisted mix of rage and frustration. Reynolds, Simmons spat, his voice dripping with contempt. This is your doing. All this talk about change, about reform, it's tearing the department apart. Mark felt a wave of anger, but forced himself to stay calm. Greg, this isn't the way to handle things. If you have a problem, we can talk about it. But this, this isn't helping anyone. Simmons shook his head, his eyes wild. Talk? You think talking is going to fix this? You've turned the department into a joke, and now we're all paying the price. The tension in the room was palpable, and Mark knew that this confrontation could easily spiral out of control. He took a deep breath, his mind racing as he searched for the right words. Greg, I know you're angry. I know this hasn't been easy, but we're trying to make things better for everyone. If you would just give it a chance. Give it a chance, Simmons interrupted, his voice rising. You're destroying everything we've worked for. You're making us weak. Mark felt a surge of frustration, but he kept his voice steady. No, Greg, we're making the department stronger. Stronger because we're addressing the real issues, the ones that have been ignored for too long. I know it's hard to accept, but we can't keep doing things the same way and expect different results. For a moment, Simmons just stared at him, his chest heaving with emotion. Then something in his expression shifted, a flicker of doubt crossing his features. Mark seized the opportunity. Greg, I'm not your enemy, Mark said, his tone softening. We're on the same side here. We both want what's best for the department, for the community, but we can't achieve that if we're divided. We need to work together, please. The room was silent everyone holding their breath as they waited for Simmons' response. Mark could see the conflict in his eyes, the struggle between his anger and the truth he didn't want to acknowledge. Finally, Simmons lowered his head, the fight draining out of him. I just, I just don't know how to handle all this, Reynolds. It's too much, too fast. Mark stepped closer, his voice gentle. I get it, Greg. Change is scary, but we're not alone in this. We can figure it out together. Simmons looked up, meeting Mark's gaze with a weary expression. You really think we can make this work? Mark nodded, his heart pounding with a mix of relief and hope. I do, but it's going to take all of us. Simmons hesitated for a moment longer before finally nodding. All right, Reynolds, I'll give it a shot, but no promises. Mark smiled, feeling the tension in the room begin to ease. That's all I'm asking for, Greg, one step at a time. As the crowd began to disperse, Mark felt a sense of accomplishment that was different from anything he had experienced before. This was not just a victory for him. It was a victory for the entire department, for the community, and for the future they were building together. In the weeks that followed, the changes within the department began to take hold. 
The training programs continued, with more officers gradually embracing the new approach. The resistance didn't disappear overnight, but the conversations had shifted. What had once been seen as an insurmountable divide was now being bridged, one step at a time. Mark continued to work closely with Captain Evans, Lisa Hernandez, and Judge Rebecca Carter, refining the training sessions and expanding their reach. The impact was slow but steady, with officers beginning to apply what they had learned in the field. The community, too, responded positively, with more people coming forward to share their stories and engage in dialogue with law enforcement. As for Greg Simmons, while he still had his reservations, he made good on his promise to give the new approach a chance. He attended the training sessions, albeit reluctantly at first, but over time, Mark noticed a subtle change in his attitude. Simmons wasn't ready to fully embrace the reforms, but he was no longer actively opposing them. It was a small victory, but a significant one. One afternoon, Mark received a message from Rebecca inviting him to speak at a citywide forum on police reform. The event was set to bring together leaders from across the community, law enforcement, and government, all with the goal of discussing the future of policing in the city. Mark hesitated at first, unsure if he was ready for such a public role. But with the encouragement of his colleagues and friends, he agreed. Yeah. The forum was held in the same community center where Mark and Rebecca had first brought their conversation to the public. As he stood before the crowd, Mark felt a mix of nerves and excitement. The journey that had begun with a single traffic stop had led him to this moment, a moment where he could contribute to something larger than himself. When it was his turn to speak, Mark took a deep breath and stepped up to the podium. He looked out at the faces in the crowd, seeing both familiar and new faces. Some were skeptical, others hopeful, but all were there because they believed in the possibility of change. Thank you for being here today, Mark began, his voice steady and clear. When I first met Judge Rebecca Carter, I never imagined that our encounter would lead to this. But as we stand here today, I'm reminded of the power of dialogue, of listening, and of being willing to change. He paused, letting his words sink in. We've made progress, but there's still a long way to go. The work we're doing is challenging, and it's not always easy, but it's necessary. Because if we want a future where law enforcement and the community can truly work together, we have to be willing to confront the issues that divide us. We have to be willing to build bridges. As he continued, Mark spoke about the importance of accountability, empathy, and trust. He shared the lessons he had learned from Rebecca, from Lisa, from Captain Evans, and even from Greg Simmons. And as he spoke, he felt a sense of purpose that he had never known before. The forum ended with a standing ovation, and as Mark stepped down from the podium, he was greeted by Rebecca, who smiled at him with pride. You did well, Mark, she said, her voice warm. Thank you, Rebecca, Mark replied, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. I couldn't have done it without you. Rebecca shook her head. This was always in you, Mark. You just needed the opportunity to let it out. As they left the community center, Mark felt a profound sense of fulfillment. The journey had been long and difficult, but it had been worth it. He had not only found his voice, but had also helped to create a path for others to follow. And as they walked out into the bright afternoon sun, Mark knew that this was only the beginning. The work of building a better, more just future was far from over. But with allies by his side and the lessons he had learned along the way, he was ready for whatever came next.